are such an asshole. We have a request, and if you have a request, and more importantly than anything else, you have money, and more important than that, you're willing to give it to me, you can hire me at assholeconsulting.com, or I, the world's only professional asshole and America's eldest, not only the oldest, but the eldest brother, will give you the kick in the teeth you so desperately need because your mom married a pussy. All right. Uh, this is a, I've answered this question kind of roundabout in different ways, but not as directly as how do I hedge against the collapsing economy, in the United States, that kind of thing. So let's go through his request. Dear asshole, I'd like a video response with rapid currency debasement and future uncertainty with social security gives us younger generations a foggy retirement scenario. I need you young kids working more and pay more social security taxes. All right. So let's, let's not forget that. After seven years of my own financial education going down deep, deep, Deep down the rabbit hole and finding some level of normalcy, I've come to terms with the fact that figuring out how to invest for a future of uncertainty may be beyond my level of competency. Let me answer it more conclusively than that. There, It is beyond everyone's competency because no one knows what the future is going to bring. That's why there's always a, a legal disclaimer, like no guaranteed of performance. You can't sue me because I don't. You're asking people to predict the future. Uh, and I think that's one of the main confusing points about finance and investing. It is not accounting. Accounting is finite. Finance and investing, who knows what the economy of the people are going to do. But people see the numbers, they think that like, oh, the number is six. Oh, fucking idiot. If, if you had an MBA like I did, you'd know the number was six. Yeah, it's the answer to everything. Uh, it's not like that. The answer is, I don't know. That should be the answer for every economist, investment advisor, financial planner. I don't know. And the, the simplest thing that retirement planning, investing, whatever, however you want to, planning for retirement, saving for the future, it all basically comes down to diversification of risk, limiting your risk through diversification. There's other things as well, um, and it's kind of the theme of your question. But diversification is is kind of the name of the game. And so um, that's why, so after seven years of education, that's more than the vast majority of people have done, and you will never catch that white dragon. There's no way to know. It's really 6.2. You don't, we don't. So you've already, we'll go through what you've done. You've gone pretty good lengths to diversify against the collapse and all that. But there's, it will never, there's always something else to do. Like I'm at the stage where I'm getting a water cistern put in when I get back home. And I'm probably going to go to the Paulding gun site training to do combat arms. Um, Cause right now I just know how to shoot a gun. I don't know how to like, I know nothing about battle or combat. I don't. I'm pretty, there's not much left, but there'd probably be some else after that. How to do sutures with uh, dental floss in the field. I, I think I'd draw the line at that. Uh, for context, I'm in my early 30s, stable job, making about 95000 a year. Where have all the good men gone? Uh, in a lowish cost of living area in the southeast United States. No kids currently, but most likely we'll have one or two in the near future. No debts outside a sub $200,000 mortgage on my personal residence. A very cheap small rental, which I'm underwater in. Cash flow positive, so I'm not super worried. That's That's what mainly matters. For starters, I have a private sector pension, expecting three thousand per month at retirement age. That's not bad. What's that'll be worth in twenty five years? Who knows? Yeah. Okay. So if it's only three thousand dollars a month now, that is not going to be that much in twenty five year time. So you are wise to further uh, uh, hedge. I have an odd four hundred one k setup in which my company adds around nine to ten thousand a year, but I cannot add my own money. I have tried union have weird rules. Yeah, well, then go with uh, go with an IRA. You have to talk to your accountant, find out whether you're hitting the li contribution limits based on your income. I don't know. Uh, but if they won't let you contri contribute to your own 401k, then you, you don't need an employer to set up your own retirement fund if you would like to continue contributing to retirement funds beyond what's contributed to your uh, 401k, then you can get an IRA. So there's that. Uh, my 401k will be allocated to traditional allocations, i.e. Vanguard growth funds and such. Now with the excess investment money, where have all the good men gone? <clears throat> Instead of an IRA and adding more money into index funds, I'm considering stacking gold, silver, and Bitcoin with a larger percentage towards precious metals, some around 75% of my excess capital. 
if history is any guide, I should at minimum keep up with inflation. If markets keep running, I'll have a good chunk of my 401k to participate. However, if worse comes to worse, I'll have a nice stack of precious metals and some Bitcoin metals would be a mix of physical and ETFs. All right, so you're both going to get the physical <clears throat> and the paper, and you're going to be diversified. So it's not just going to be silver or gold. It would be silver, gold, and probably with the ETFs, you get copper and other types of metals if you'd like. My overall goal is to have some wealth less concentrated to the overall U.S. economy. Pick me apart and let me know why I'm stupid. You're not stupid. You're not. <clears throat> you're not. Uh, this is, unfortunately, because we wanted to vote for free shit, uh, you, a lot of you aren't, yeah, it's, it's debatable whether, you know, one, the government's going to allow you to keep your retirement, uh, money because we need free shit. All the parasites in this country need free, because we need more, right, right, Democrat, we need more help for more people. Uh, and then let's say they don't take it. All right. If they keep printing off money, what is your $3,000 a month pension going to be? Where, what is that going to buy you 25 years from now? <clears throat> so I'm going to go over an overall. Why is this up? Why? No, Microsoft. I don't want to try 365 for three for free. Stop hogging up my memory. Um, so let's go through all the options on the table. And just before we begin, all right, I'm giving you options. I can't tell you what to invest in. I can't tell you how much to buy. I can't tell you when to buy. I can't tell you what type of things to buy. Right? These are all the options that you can further evaluate further <clears throat> with the help of a licensed investment professional. And that licensed investment professional might have some things on top of this list. Please listen to him or her. But these are just some things that I've gone through. And then also I did a little bit of research that I found was kind of interesting to kind of more directly answer your question, like what correlates negatively with a crashing U.S. economy. So first, <clears throat> let's go with personal choices. The best thing you can do to hedge against inflation or collapsing economy is to be a minimalist, to need the least amount of stuff possible. So you pay off your house, you don't have a mortgage, you don't have a car payment, you have the least amount of stuff you need. You're still living happy, you have relationships, you're, I'm not saying don't buy an occasional toy or something, don't get yourself a PlayStation 5, but no fancy car shit. No ridiculous student loans for ridiculous, stupid, dumbass degrees. The big killer is more house than you need. And then just petty, dumbass shit that everyone buys and fills their garages and basements with. Knock that shit off. You should, you should go to my goal, which is to not have one single item in your house that you don't use or need. And everything else is thrown away. <clears throat> so that's the first thing. Number two, it's not an well, it is an investment, but it's not an investment in a stock or a mutual fund or anything else. That is a good skill or set of skills. Do you think dentists worry about inflation? Do you think mechanics worry about inflation? Do you think uh, surgeons worry about inflation? No, they do not. You know why? Because they'll just jack up the prices. You know why? Because you need them more than they need you. Journalism major. <laughs> Oh, you're so cute. You're so little and stupid. Oh, look at it like you. You're a major. You guys are fucked. <laughs> Your skills will be sucking dicks at truck stops. Alex Patino will be very happy. All right. But uh, skills that you could barter with, skills that people don't want to develop, like mechanics. I just had to replace my uh, cabin filter. That was a pain in the ass. That's not even, that's barely a fix. Uh, yeah, so whatever your skill is, and I'm not white collar skills. Uh, uh well, I can I can balance your TPS reports. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, Mister MBAs are going to become slaves. They're going to become slaves in target practice in a collapsing economy because they serve no purpose, none whatsoever. Or maybe they're at the truck stop. I don't know. <clears throat> can you say Harvard MBA with a dick in your mouth? I'm just wondering. Can you can you do that for you? Do you Harvard people know how to do that? Um, <clears throat> so those are the, the two things there. Now we get into actual things to buy. All right. Now I don't mind making this res, uh, recommendation, um, where I, I rarely give like, okay, buy this amount. I, my goal when it comes to precious metals, I recommend you have 200 ounces of silver per person. All right. How, and when you buy it, I don't know. 
That's not, I'm not saying what price to buy it at. <clears throat> I'm just saying over the course of your life, you should accumulate 200 ounces of silver. I also recommend getting a little bit of junk silver as well. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Right? But that's one of the few things like, yeah, an average 200 ounces of silver per person. And you're going to be better off than those without it. Gold, certainly. Some people like gold. I do not. It is not divisible. Well, I mean, it is divisible, but it's almost too valuable. Um, it's not to say you couldn't buy nice jewelry for your wife or girlfriend, as long as you understand that we got to hock it later in case, you know, your Democrat zombies come and there's no food and they're like, give us your food. No, you gave us your food. No, uh, you benefited unfairly. No, we made the food. We're farmers. Fuck off and die. Oh, wait. You banned the police. Oh, no, for you. Um, <clears throat> but go, I, yeah, sure. I, I, if you want it, okay, fine. But I, it's, it's not, it's, it's a, uh, just not for me. All right. It might be for you. There's other things like other precious metals, not iridium. There's some of these rare earth metals you can buy uh, if you wanted to. Uh, but I, I think just gold and silver. I enjoy making copper ingots and aluminum ingots. I got a little makeshift kiln back at home. So there's that. <clears throat> Guns and bullets, you don't need a lot, but it's something to diversify against a no shit collapse. Guns and bullets also tend to hold their value. You don't you don't need, I knew one guy had 600 guns. By the way, you don't need 600 guns. You at most, at most need eight Pistol, shotgun, <clears throat> carbine slash rifle, AR style. Um, pistol, shotgun, uh, large pistol for uh, animals, uh, hunting rifle. Uh, yeah, not even eight. I'm trying. I'm, I'm coming. I'm trying to come up with other ones. You need, don't don't tag. Oh, you need eighty seven different other types. Um, and then the one that I don't have is a. Uh, no fucking around gun like a 450 Bushmaster or a 458 SOCOM. 450 Bushmaster is cheaper, way cheaper. Those like the bullets are the size of a football. And you uh even if you if you your tar if you wing your target or they got armor, you're knocking them down. It's that's the no fucking around gun. So whatever those six guns are for hunting, personal defense, defense against animals. Um like uh, a, uh, a fighting gun, and there you go, and the, enough bolts to go with it. Uh, it. Related to that, you said you want to do a little bit of like ETFs. Uh, they're commodity index funds that uh, invest in commodities, and those can be a little bit wider. We're talking predominantly metals here at this point in time, but you can get things that include lumber, <clears throat> tungsten, gypsum, the hundreds, if not thousands of different types of commodities that are out there. I don't invest in commodities index just because I haven't. Um, but if you wanted to have some kind of paper inflation hedge against that, uh, that's something maybe to look at. I, I remember looking at the, no, it was a staples index. Like your uh, necessities, like toilet paper, kind of your Procter and Gamble type of companies. And that, I thought that would have been doing better. It it has been trailing behind the S&P 500 significantly. So, um, you know, just so you know, that it's uh, that's the perennial underperformer compared to the S&P 500 index. <clears throat> also, I do believe when I researched something before, I know it's boring, but the S&P 500 index is one of the better hedgers against inflation. I think it has like a 0.89 correlation against inflation or it erodes 89% of the inflation away. Um, that was a an interesting find that I had there, but you already got that probably covered in your 401k. <clears throat> then you're talking about real estates. You already own a house. Uh, maybe you want to look at just some more physical land, just the land itself, especially if you live in a city or a place where there is not enough natural resources to live off the, off the land. So you may want to consider that. Like, okay, well, this is the place we're going to go. We set up a camper. It's got water, you know, kind of like how a joker over at Better Bachelor is doing. If you want the paper version of that, because you don't want to dick around with 
whatever, swamp land or mowing down trees or I, whatever reason. There's also real estate investment trusts. <clears throat> uh, where and keep in mind, pretty much all of these, we're not talking that they're going to go up in value, just so you know. We're talking these are more or less inflation hedges. Right? They're, they're insurance policies. That are, it's not like you're investing. You know, I know I say how to invest against a collapsing U.S. economy. You really don't invest. You insure against. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you bought some gold and silver. You do not want them going up in value. You don't want them spiking up in value. That means something bad is happening in the, in the real economy. Real estate, a little bit different. That just might be the interest rates are low again. <clears throat> but so far, all this stuff is kind of a, you got your 401k, your traditional investments kind of geared towards retirement. This is more an inflation hedge, collapse hedge type of thing. You know, like you're, you, know, you go to say trade school, learn how to become a mechanic. Well, there's not, there's not a stock price for your skills. That would be the wage you can charge, which should go up with inflation over time. So again, the investing is you get a rate of return in the excess of inflation and you're making money. These so far are hedges that you don't necessarily want going up in value. <clears throat> then there's foreign investments. As you know, I was looking for property overseas. Still am looking for property overseas. I am a rookie at that. I don't know anything about it. I'm just starting my own education and research on that. So that's something you could do. Also, though, you could find a foreign real estate investment trust or a foreign ETF. I'm sure paper versions of that is out there. <clears throat> then related to any real estate you might buy for your off-grid home, um, things that you might want to equip your house with, freeze-dried food, booze, you can barter with that. When I get home, I'm going to teach myself how to distill booze because I want a skill that isn't farming so I could trade booze for food because it sounds a lot more fun and I'll become the the beer baron a la The Simpsons. You got a garden. Does it have water? Setting up solar panels uh, and tools. Do you have tools to maintain the home and live off the land, that kind of thing? <clears throat> and then there is also crypto. Crypto is the most volatile. I think it probably is the most volatile investment out there. Um, I, generally, yes, you would like to have some crypto. I can say this. Crypto is the part of any well-balanced retirement portfolio. Should it account for 90% of your retirement portfolio? No, probably not. But kind of like silver, yeah, you need, you need a little. I think you need a little bit of crypto. How much depends on you, buddy. Me personally, I would like to have the equivalent of one Bitcoin. Which crypto do I invest in? Do I have to all be in Bitcoin? When should I buy it? I don't know. That's up to you. I'm just saying, kind of like the silver, in 10 years time, it, you'd be in a really good position to have 200 ounces of silver and one full Bitcoin. Not saying Bitcoin itself, but a, a diversified portfolio of cryptocurrencies that is the equivalent to one Bitcoin. And then just kind of like, okay, that's enough. I mean. It, you could always have more. I mean, if, if you got extra cash laying around and your next thing is like, okay, I'm going to go buy a boat with it. Like, okay, yeah, just, I could tell you this. <clears throat> if it comes down to buying a boat or buying more crypto, probably buy some more crypto because the boat's going to go down to zero value. Crypto might go down 99%, but at least you'll have that 1%, whereas a boat is going to cost you a shit ton of fucking money. Yeah, so if you do, or like if you're stupid, like, okay, forget boats. Like if you're going to get married, holy fucking shit. Okay, just go buy whatever, whatever zany, crazy cryptocurrency is out there, all right? You're going to spend 50000 on a wedding? You're never going to get that fucking money back. Go buy Dogecoin. I mean, literally, go, go, piss, go buy a shit ton of booze. That'll maintain its value. A wedding? That's over one night. Your wife is going to divorce you anyway. There's only, only a 45% chance. Eh, eh. <clears throat> yeah. That should be a, a bumper sticker. Don't marry, buy crypto. Hang on, maybe I will. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me do it. Don't marry, buy crypto. Oh, don't marry, buy crypto. <laughs> um. Oh, shit. Let me go back to my notes here. All right. And so there's some crypto there. All right. Now, again, options for you to evaluate later. 
I don't know when to buy them. I don't know what a price to buy them. I don't know how much you want to buy. That's just the menu I've given you. It is up to you to do your research and choose what you personally would care to order from the menu and how much of it and when. <clears throat> and for that, obviously, I'd recommend you talk to a certified financial planner, investment advisor. Um, then let's go to thing. Oh, my overall goal is to have some wealth less correlated with the overall U.S. economy. So I looked this up. One investments are inversely correlated with U.S. stocks. So not the U.S. economy. <clears throat> Just point out there's U.S. stocks. And then there's also the U.S. economy, which is GDP. So. Oh, I had an article. I had an article. Where did it go? Asset class correlation map. Guggenheim investments. <clears throat> Reject all. Ooh, is this? Oh, good. And they got the correlation coefficients, positive, negative, currencies. Oh, this is a nice chart. Well, it's only 10 years of data, though. Um. Okay, here's the S&P 500. Let me see if I can read the, <clears throat> the chart right. Okay, so let's using the S&P 500 as a proxy for the U.S. economy, which is not the same as GDP. Um. Cash has a negative 0.04, so no correlation. Commodities, 0.4. Currencies. Currencies have a point, negative 0.4 correlation coefficient. <clears throat> Equity market neutral. Put on a hedge fund. Oh, darn it. Currency. Investment grade bonds have a slight negative correlation. Uh, real estate investment. No, that's not it. Commodities have a low positive correlation. Darn it, there was something else. This is a, this is some nice research they did. I'm just doing a, a research here. Currencies, investment grade bonds. How it works, native bond for positive. What's what stocks are negatively correlation? Hang on, maybe I should. Maybe I did type U.S. economy. Stock market index. Oh darn it! I had it here. <clears throat> it was bonds. Is there's the Guggenheim investment thing? Maybe it's because I'm using Google. Let me try Bing. <clears throat> visualizing asset class correlation over 25 years. This is the visual capitalist. All right, here's 25 years, a little bit better. Developing emerging markets. No correlation positive. Rolling one-year correlation. That's too short. I need a 25-year correlation. Gold has a pretty negative correlation versus the dollar. Bonds and negative correlation. Well, that was it. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's that's per year. I want long term. Darn it. Which have the best? I knew I should have saved uh, the thing. Correlation point one number of assets standard deviation. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Here's a little, little more. This is from mymoneyblog.com, and they have it in five-year increments. Uh, five-year correlation trends versus Morningstar U.S. Market Index. So the ones that have a negative correlation would be the U.S. Bond Treasury. The problem is your U.S. Bond Treasuries. Like, if there's a no joke collapse, those bond trends. Well, they would be paying you an inflated dollar, so there might be some legitimacy in that. So. U.S. 5 to 10-year treasury bond, 10-year plus bond, um, low correlation global core bond, global commodities. They have a low correlation with the stock market. Uh, U.S. tips, corporate bonds have relatively low, if not negative, correlation. 
Yeah. Um, but that's the S and P five hundred. I do, I do, but you already got the S and P five hundred covered. Uh, so what I would, I can't find it, but what I would do, go and research and find a Google search. You should be able to find different asset classes that have historically performed negatively or correlate negatively with the U.S. Uh, stock market. The U.S. economy would be something different. That's GDP growth. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're looking at, but. Dude, if it comes to a collapse, it good luck. I mean, if it gets bad enough, if you have any, all your paper and digital electronic investments are gone. Right? Uh, if you want to sleep soundly at night, uh, me having you know a, a couple of year supply of food and some guns and ammo that makes me sleep more soundly. Having a group of people where we agree, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hunker down here, all right, we're gonna hold that valley, and we're gonna take shift sleeping. Uh, that that is is. Uh, Something that that uh, makes me feel a lot. I don't worry about inflation uh, in that regard. But yeah, with the extra money, I'd be looking where you're at right now. <clears throat> yeah, you, you say should a minimum keep up with inflation. If markets keep running, I'll have a good chunk of my 401k to participate. Worst come, I have a nice stack of precious metal. Blah, blah. My over goal, all goal is to have some wealth less correlated to the overall U.S. economy. Pick me apart and let me know what I would. There was somewhere in here you wanted to. <clears throat> yeah, the best way to hedge against the U.S. economy is to not need it. Where you're just like, oh, no. Oh, gee, the GDP is going down. Oh, too bad. I still have my food. Oh, no. The whatever electricity went out in Los Angeles because they let the street too much street shit got in the way of the repairman. That's fine. I got solar panels. Uh, that's that's what I would do. But with your excess money, <clears throat> the I'm reluctant to tell you which ones to tackle first. So I think what would be a generally, though, a good strategy is to kind of tackle them all at the same time. Uh, start saving up a little bit of money for some land. Uh, that you could work on or if you like or start looking for the land because you could always sell your house and then go ahead and and buy the land down the road see where I, oh okay i want to have this has water it's far enough removed away that kind of thing um <clears throat> start slowly picking up some silver what's the price of silver now silver price oh it's come down oh wait but that that was today today it went down oh wow it's up to 28 bucks Ooh, look at that. Man, I'm glad I bought silver a year ago. Uh, yeah, so it's a little high now. Uh, but, you know, maybe keep an eye on it. And uh, I recommend Miles Franklin uh, for your for your precious metals purchases. Slowly, you know, buy a roll or two of, of silver eagles. Slowly accumulate 200 ounces, and then that'll kind of be done. Start looking at crypto. Block. What's Bitcoin at? I think it had a run up 63,000. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Yeah. It's at the peak so far <clears throat> or near its peak. All right. You know, kind of, kind of keep an eye on that. Maybe not buy all of it now, uh, but slowly accumulate. Um, I would also, this is where it really would help to go talk to a, a financial planner, find out based on your income. Cause you're, your employer is contributing to your 401k. You should have some room left over to contribute to an IRA. Now, whether you want a Roth or a traditional, that's up to you. That's what a financial planner is. But that would almost, I'll, I'll tell you right now, that would be one of the most immediate things I would do because you're going to get a tax tr a benefit of it one way or another. <clears throat> Unless the Democrats take it away, which they would love to because that's not your money. It's their money. Um, and then kind of assess, okay, what does your portfolio look like? Do you want to have a little bit more of this? Do you want to have a little bit more real estate? Again, that's all up to you, but I would definitely be looking into setting up an IRA and um, kind of go from there. Uh, you got a house. You're going to have, in theory, a pension. <clears throat> I I know you got, okay, you got rental property. I'd start looking, doing some travel now. If you haven't picked up Reconnaissance Man, go get Reconnaissance Man and read it and start evaluating where you, you're you going to build your forever home. Uh, that takes more work and research and time than it does actual money. 
So you might as well start looking for a place to build your forever home and then you just go retire. Or if you can work remotely or there's property that fits this description that's still within for a range for you to work and then start physically hedging and inoculating yourself against the U.S. economy. Oh, no, the recession happened. Oh, no, they're laying everyone's off. Z. Oh, no, Z. Oh, that's all right. <clears throat> I guess I'll just take a year vacation. I, I bought food. I got water. I got, I got you know, whatever, wind windmill. My electricity is very low. Those kind of things. Uh, I want to participate. Worst comes to worst. I'll have a nice day. Uh, yeah, guns. Guns could be one you do right now. I'd be kind of a fun. If you don't have guns and ammo, go go get some. Don't go overboard. Don't go ape shit with the shit, all right? I would just start with a pistol. For, for home defense and carry, might have to take your carry concealed course or training. And then just an AR-15 style carbine. Be yourself, I don't know, 1,000 bullets for the pistol and then uh, 2,000 for the, for the carbine. Mm. And it sounds like you're into trades, other, which is already so you got a good skill set. Is there something else you could do that would add your wage is there a, an added certification you could get that you could become like a super welder or a super plumber is there a, another type of trade that you could specialize in adjacent to the one you have now uh, that would allow you to you could do electricity or something on top of it. i don't know what your trade is but anyway yeah so there there's some ideas you certainly got your work cut out for you uh but yeah you're you're way better how old you're not even, you're in your early 30s yeah you're doing way better than Pretty much everyone else in your peer group, they're still like getting their driver's license and living at home with mom and dad. I'd be okay with it if they had the driver's license and they were stacking up money. I do have a couple clients like that. Most of them are just like, oh my God, more Democrat, please. <clears throat> Holy shit. Why 16? What time is it? Six o'clock. I'll never figure this out. I'll never figure it out. Drew, two bucks. My hedge was buying back all my pension. Yeah, well, see, yeah, sometimes it's situation specific. Um, I'm I'm happy about that, Drew. That's that's a real that's some cool shit. That's exalted example. Ten bucks. Just signed 115 thousand year cloud engineer preparing to buy a multifamily home in Savannah, Georgia. I hope the landlord rights are good down there. Exalted. I wouldn't rent to human beings ever again. Never again. Not now. Thanks for the help over the years. Plan to enjoy the decline working remotely from Eastern Europe or Southeast Asia. Awesome. Well, maybe our paths will cross over there someday. Drew, two bucks. Surprisingly, MBAs are quite marketable in government. Yeah, it's because they got their, you're right. Uh, any bureaucratic thing needs a master's level and it's all scripted and written into their, their um, <clears throat> algorithms they use to figure out whether you qualify for a job or not. But at the end of the day, most MBAs are pretty worthless human beings. You really don't have anything. You're not better than someone with common sense. You don't have an edge. You don't have a skill. You're a schmuck that went to school for another two years and Lord knows what you paid. Uh, my truth, the king, $2. Won't someone please think of the children? Free shit. The answer to everything is free shit. Just go look at all the communist countries. Go look at Venezuela right now. Free shit. Mad Dog Radio, five bucks, new guy. Dude, you forgot about flipping houses and drop shipping, Cappy. Dude, bro. Blink, ding, 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 Christoph Anon, 10 bucks. Lakeside home and property in Russia, $40 a month for utilities and rent a cops to keep out riffraff at $28 a year property tax. I'll be watching the West Decline on Russian TV while eating popcorn. Christoph, can you email me some pictures? I'd love to see like where you live. And I'm not going to post it on the internet or anything, <clears throat> but I, I, I think you're what? Siberia, right? Oh, no, you're Moscow area. I forget. Non, two bucks, no gun and no training equals premium loot. Exactly. You can't just own the gun. You need to know how to use it. It's boring shit. Having shifts, having night watchmen patrol the perimeter is pretty fucking important. 
Because I know about you, sleep is pretty important to me. Doc Paradox, regular tuner inner. 10 bucks. Cash reserves are fairly forgiving tax wise. Investing wisely in land is paramount. If you want the real hedge, need nothing. For further reference, see Cap's minimalism course. It's all raw truth. Yeah, well, the minimalism course is an open for enrollment. There's um it's it's sister companion course. All this is unteachable called Achieving Financial Excellence. But both those courses are more philosophical. They're not um they're not um action like do X, then do Y. It's it's to give you the motivation to do X and do Y <clears throat> and stop being a lazy quanta ha ha. Even my one of, I think the shortest, cheapest course I have is called How to Stop Being Lazy, uh, which is a uh, 50 bucks and probably worth it above my pay grade, two bucks. How safe do you think federal government pensions are? Well, they're safer than average because they can print off the money, but all federal government pensions, whether it's social security, because that's a federal government pension, Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, all the different government programs. I mean, you're going to get a check. It's what is it going to buy? We already see that happening. Every parasite out there collecting a government check. What are they bitching and whining about inflation? It's like, well, none of you fuckers work. What'd you think when a third of the fucking adult population doesn't work and you're not producing the shit? All we did was print off more money. We didn't produce more shit. <clears throat> oh my God, shit's so expensive. Right, because the number of dollars per unit of shit has increased. We forget, I know this is going to be too advanced for all the college graduates and Americans out there. Not you, sir. I'm just pointing this out. Y'all keep focusing on the number of dollars we print off. How about we focus on what percentage of you are producing shit? How much shit we produce? How about that? If you just go, oh, supply side economics, but that's what Reagan said, so it can't be true. How is it being poor after 45 years? <clears throat> um, yeah, so you're going to get your check. It's just whether it will buy anything or not. My truth, the king. Five bucks. Check this, Cappy. <laughs> check this, Cappy. I buy a boat to schmuzz. Clients to schmooze clients to IPO some pay pay coin as I have Chad deduct my boat as office expense on my taxes. I am so smart. S M R T. Uh, yeah, Chad does have people. Can I ride off my boat? No. Can I ride off my dog? No. Fucking grown up adults asking these fucking questions. Doc Paradox, two bucks. Check your email for pics of bumper stick of bumper stickers. Awesome. I will. Mark Magania, one of our real estate agents in the field, five bucks. I don't know on the moving abroad thing. Looked into it after my parents died. Not sure it's worth it. U.S. government charges a huge tax to leave 24% or so. That's if you forfeit your citizenship. Um, I, the When I say invest overseas, I mean like an oh shit house where the Nazis are coming to take your land and shoot you if you resist. Um, where, you know, your, your kinfolk betray you because the Democrat offered them free shit. And well, fuck you because it's free shit. It loves me my free shit. And you're like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Or they're just like, oh, you saved up? Oh, uh, give us that. No. Give it or we're gonna send in the cops and the military and the National Guard. Like, oh darn, I guess, I guess I'm I'm gone now. And the place that you wanted is burnt down. That's just too bad. <clears throat> Ken Rose, two bucks, just gives us a thumb up. Thumbs up. Thank you, Ken. Doc Paradox again for five bucks. Drew's comment about MBAs being most effective in government is already haunting my dreams due to the sheer truth of the statement. I hate you, Drew. <laughs> Justified mistake. Any two bucks. I have a Roth IRA pension. What's next? HSA? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. If you've maxed out your Roth IRA, you go to the HSA. Although, in your case, Justified, I mean, if your goal was to go buy property down in Mexico, and uh, work remote from a nice beach. With remember, I want floor to ceiling windows overlooking the Pacific. Okay, Cappy's command. I want. I want. So factor that into your purchase. Um, maybe just start saving up some money for a down payment or purchase a fund for your place down in Mexico. <clears throat> but yeah, if you need tax deductions, HSA would be the next thing. And I'll justify because you're not you're not as old as me. It's not going to hurt you to throw it into that and have a rollover, uh, because you're young. You're not gonna you're not gonna have uh, expenses now, but maybe you will later on, or you will later on because you're going to get old. 
Christoph Anon, two bucks. Silver spot is bull crap. One ounce coins cost 30 cents. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, Christoph. You're right. Um, you're right. That is the paper cost. Uh, one ounce coins do cost 37. I forgot about that. Wow, it's a $9 premium, huh? A $9 spread. Doc Paradox, $2. And please, you fools, test your am ammunition always. That reminds me. I got to go out to the desert and shoot. I got some ammo that got wet. <clears throat> Uh, John Smith, two bucks Volkswagen, the car for the man that is too sophisticated for a domestic, but can't afford a BMW. And they lie about their fuel efficiency. Half of the Fabit, 279 Canadian. Already started stocking up on silver and coins. There you go. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Link below. If you have, if investment is new to you or you don't know where to begin, uh, my you know most popular book, my flagship book, Bachelor Pad Economics. That's your starting point. Go there. It's a reference book. It is 500 pages. You don't read it cover to cover. You say, where am I now? <clears throat> I got to decide what to major in college. You go to the education chapter, and that's the chapter you read. You were out of college. You're working five years. You paid off your student loan debt. You know, I know this is a mythical, fictional story, but let's just say you did. You want some whiny little bit. Yeah, you need a student loan bailout. I'm so strong and independent. I'm so educated and smart, but I need a student loan bailout. <laughs> but, you know, you're an adult and you paid off your student loans and gave back the money from other people you took it from. Uh, you're probably going to be looking more retirement planning, 401ks, IRAs. So you go to the retirement planning chapter of the book. You're a young man like, oh, dude, bro. I want to get my peen touched. If I get a sweet ride with some rims, then the bitches be sitting on my dick, y'all. No, go please read the chapter on buying cars. Matter of fact, for all you boys out there, women don't do this. I'm not as much. This is this uh, this is this is all on your your lap, guys. <clears throat> Just for the for the chapter alone on how to buy a car. That alone is going to save you at least tens of thousands of dollars. If not more, I don't want to sound too bragging, but probably more like $200,000 over the course of your life. Because, man, you guys piss away your money on cars. And that's a big ass lifelong. College, you only get fucked in the ass once. All right. Cars, you're going to get fucked in the ass every five years or so. All right? I'm just trying to make the fucking in the ass as small and as painless as possible. You guys want to get the big old dildo with the 12.8% interest rate and shove it in there. Oh, my $900 a month lease <clears throat> for three years. I still don't own it. Um, boop, 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 boop. Why did we scroll up? How are we up so far? Um, yeah, so that's linked below. Bachelor Pad Economics. Get that book. I guarantee you it's going to be more valuable and useful than any college textbook you bought because pretty much every college textbook you bought was a worthless piece of shit. I'm not really making a big claim there. James Rankin, five bucks. I'm assuming if you have little silver or anything saved, you're screwed right now and into the future. Not necessarily, no. I mean, you you got to have to buy it. Yes, I didn't, all my assets, I didn't buy at the exact low bottom. No one can do that. If you could, you'd be future man. So skip from SNL. But yeah, okay, 37 is the new normal price for silver. Somewhere in the 30s. Will it ever see the 20s again? I don't know. I don't know. You can't predict the future. But you're better off diversifying a little. This is why I dispose, this is why the minimalism comes into play. All right. Instead of buying cars you can't afford and college degrees that don't pay and marrying women who divorce you and take half your shit. If you don't buy the shit you don't need, you will have extra money. And you'd be like, oh, what do I got to buy? Like, okay, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Now. Myron, a fresh and fit fame, he asked me, he's like, hey, you know, how much silver do I got? I say 200 ounces. Um, but you don't have to buy that all right in one bat. Now, Myron, very busy, very successful. Do you think it is worth his time to sit around and dick around and wait for the price of silver to drop? No. He's like, okay, so where do I buy it? I said, well, you got to go to a coin dealer. Again, Miles Franklin, da, 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 da. They were out of Silver Eagles. Then he found a place, and I think it was in the 30s. It was it was pretty top dollar. He was buying at a temporary peak or something. He, he didn't buy it at a low. He bought all of it in one shot. Do you know why? So he didn't have to fucking do it again. But Myron, 
again, criticize him as you might. That guy is a minimalist. He doesn't have a fancy car. He don't have fancy clothes. He doesn't have fancy expenses. He has business expenses, but doesn't have. He's he's not out pissing away his money. And that's one of the benefits of minimalism. Is it's not that price never matters, but your time matters more. And here you are sitting on whatever forty grand cash, and you got to buy two hundred ounces, which is what six seven thousand. Uh, if I did the math right, <clears throat> for two hundred ounces of silver, buy it. You're done with it. And now you can move on. That's in position. All right. Uh, you're, you're looking at housing. You're looking at land. You're sitting on 200,000 cash because you're a minimalist. You saved your money. You didn't get married. All right. You find a piece of land for $50,000. Your realtor, well, let's negotiate down to 45. And it's a hot property market, kind of like it is now. Give them the fucking 50,000. Be done with it. And now you move on. Um. So, yeah, I unfortunately might have to buy a little bit higher than in times past, but that's the way inflation works. Hey, Dr. Oh, not Dr. Hibbert. Who's this doctor? Oh, fuck, I forget. Hello, everybody. Special Ed Doc. Definitely buy slow. I bought silver between 30 and 35 during Obama. My market timing sucks. Think long game and commodities. Ouch, for, for a reason, not just number go up. There, there is no such thing as number go up. Let me paint a, let me. Give you another way, fucking Christ. <clears throat> Let me give you another way to look at all this inflation shit. I hope I never have to sell it. I hope I never see my money on this shit again. I hope I leave it to my nieces and nephews. Because it means that bad shit didn't happen. Right? I'm not looking to make a profit off of it. This is shit that I purchase and buy so that if the dollar becomes worthless, or it becomes, it buys a lot less. I have some, oh, I need, I need a, whatever, a, a kidney surgery. And, you know, I find I get a $10,000 government check from Medicare to handle that. But the kidney surgery costs 30000 Oh my God, I don't have $20,000 in cash to cover it. Yeah, but I got three pieces of silver that might cover it, that I could go liquidate for $20,000. It, it's an insurance. It's not an investment. And that's kind of, see, because the client, he's kind of got his investments covered with the 401k and probably setting up an IRA. And then after that, once you got that all set up, it's like, okay, now what? Well, your main concern is about inflation or collapsing economy. Well, now we're talking insurance, not necessarily investing. Some have elements of, you know, like real estate, that, that can be an investment, obviously. But also generally hedge against inflation. All right, there you go. Bet your pad economics. Link below. Get your financial shit together. And don't be po no mo. Toodles.